Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Elliot Kane. I thank you for being with us today. Uh, it's just 101 and I'm um, seeing that people are still logging in. So we're just going to take a couple of uh, minutes to allow people to log in and we'll promptly start at uh, 105. Well, depending on the time zone everyone's in, I'd like to say good morning and good afternoon and welcome to uh, today's uh, webinar. Um, I am uh, Elliot Kaim, I'm a business development manager with uh, Horizon. Uh, I'm out of Montreal, but our organization is based in Ontario. And we'll be beginning very shortly. I, we do have a very large audience today on this uh, webinar. Um, uh, because of that, amount of attendees, we will be keeping everyone on mute uh, for the purposes of managing all the background or potential background noise that could uh, exist. Uh, however, I strongly and we strongly recommend and encourage everyone to use uh, the chat uh, functionality to submit any and all questions as we go through the content. Um, I'm just going to give it one more minute. Uh, just looking to hit that magic number, and uh, we will get started. All right, it does look like a good part of all the attendees are online, so we will get started. Um, I'd like to take a moment uh, just to introduce uh, the panelists I have with me today. So um, uh, we have Tiffany, uh, who is from Horizon and one of our product specialists. Uh, we have uh, Michael uh, from Arcabus. Uh, we also have uh, Greg uh, from Arcabus, and we have uh, Ayana from Horizon as well. And it's our pleasure today to um, uh, review uh, today's topic. And with no further ado, I'll get into the meat of the presentation. 
so today we're here to talk about uh, corporate asset management, uh, the what, the why, and the how. Uh, some of the uh, catalysts and the factors that we've seen uh, uh, coming to light in the last couple of months. And also it's a discussion about uh, aligning technology uh, with a lot of the corporate asset management strategies uh, that are uh, continually in play uh, within your municipalities. Um, so this is the first of a few webinars we have prepared on today's topic. Uh, the next webinar will be in August, um, and it will uh, provide a much more deeper dive into uh, how the technology can enable and help uh, in the corporate asset management. Um, we will try to keep today's concise. We have an hour. Uh, the session is being recorded, especially for those who are interested but could not attend today. Or if you wish, uh, after the session to forward these internally, it would be our pleasure to provide you with a recording. I will take a quick a moment at this particular point in time just to do some uh, definitions, because uh, it's very easy to fall into the realm of acronyms in our space. Um, so uh, first thing I want to um, uh, define is um, IWMS is an acronym that stands for Integrated Workplace Management Solution, and it was coined by an independent research firm by the name of Gartner over 10 years ago. And all it really is, it's a market categorization for technology and solutions uh, like the one we are, will be talking about today, Arquebus. That being said, I also just wanted to make sure uh, everyone has the understanding that uh, Arquebus, who's on the call with us, is the software manufacturer uh, that our organization, Horizon, is an authorized reseller and dealer for in Canada. So please think of Arquebus as the technology arm and Horizon as the knowledge center and uh, having all those people to align with um, cities. Also uh, within uh, this webinar, you'll be hearing Gartner, you've already heard that. Uh, you'll be hearing Verdantex, and uh, we do reference them as these are independent firms that evaluate uh, technology uh, like the one we'll be uh, discussing today. Uh, so I'm going to get right into it now, and I, I remind everybody that you can submit uh, questions uh, using the chat functionality, which all the panelists will be monitoring. Um, All right, so I think it's important to uh, start with a good definition of asset management. And um, we're all members of uh, CNAM, and I've had the opportunity and pleasure to meet a lot of you at the trade show in Windsor. I didn't look any really further than uh, the CNAM definition for asset management, which I think plays, is a very great definition uh, for asset management. But I did want to tie in a, uh, the practical perspective of asset management and how it's based on a certain set of fundamentals. Uh, naturally, one of the key fundamentals for asset management is value. And in the broad sense, uh, an asset is anything that delivers value to the organization and its stakeholders. Uh, when we talk about municipal asset management, we typically talk about assets being a piece of publicly owned infrastructure such as roads, water distribution, indoor, outdoor recreational facilities, culverts, bridges, and bridges and office buildings. Another key fundamental um, uh, perspective on asset management is align alignment. And what does that mean? Well, for our asset management translates, it, is it translates uh, the organization objectives into technical and financial decisions, plans, and activities. So asset managers and the asset management strategy uh, has that role of playing a translator and making sure that the uh, technical and financial decisions are properly planned and the activities are articulated. Another fundamental aspect of asset management is leadership. It definitely takes uh, a, a workplace culture and leadership that is required to achieve the plans and the goals. And I think the last fundamental I will bring up today, because there's a lot of fundamentals to asset management, is what uh, um, I call assurance. Uh, asset management gives assurances 
that uh, the municipal assets will fulfill the required purposes. So uh, corporate asset management uh, is has a large list of fundamentals. I just want to take a moment to highlight those four. And if I was to summarize it in one succinct sentence, um, uh, what does asset management true value provides? If I was asked that question, my answer would be asset management provides communities the opportunity to do more with less by providing a system for thoughtful, timely spending on municipal assets. And, and that is why we're here today, uh, talking around asset management and that system for thoughtful and timely spending on those municipal assets. I'm checking the chat and we're okay, no questions. Um, so uh, I had the opportunity to come uh, to the CNAM event and had a lot of great discussions with a lot of different uh, roles within the corporate asset management uh, world. Uh, we're also blessed at Horizon to have several uh, customers in uh, as municipalities already and had very uh, succinct conversations with existing customers. And I wanted to put out there some of the catalysts, some of the things and thoughts that are keeping uh, corporate asset management uh, staff and people responsible for it awake at night, or what are they thinking about, right? Uh, so what are some of the catalysts? And again, here the list is very long. So, I mean, we are focused in on the ones that were repeated, uh, repeated, and uh, seem to, in terms of my reflection, uh, be the top uh, eight or so uh, catalysts uh, to asset management. Uh, first one is growth and population. Uh, the increases being experienced on, uh, in terms of growth puts a strain on existing infrastructure. A perfect current example of this is the current immigration issue in Ontario and Quebec, uh, where they're experiencing a high increase of immigration uh, from the U.S. and the municipalities uh, that are unfortunate, unplanned uh, expenses uh, to house and accommodate these immigrants. Uh, it's all has to do with uh, growth and population. Um, Aging and quickly deteriorating asset base. Um, I, that's very common theme in a lot of municipalities. Uh, uh, but uh, the funding sources are still limited and revenue is still limited to rehabilitate or replace these assets. Perfect example, I don't have to look much further than my hometown, which is uh, Montreal and its, uh, its road system, right? Uh, a complicated political and funding landscape over the years has reached a point where we are dealing with staggering replacement projects of roadways and water infrastructure. And we are now known across Canada as the capital of the orange cone. <laughs> Not exactly what we want to be known for. But at the heart of this, uh, when I look at all those orange cones, and it makes me think of asset management and those decis proper decisions that have to be made. And over the years, because of all the ever-changing political climate and funding sources, we're now left with a, an imaginable uh, task of uh, modernizing our roadway systems and our water systems. There's also, um, and what we heard was unrealistic service expectations. At the same time of all, all this asset management requirement for renewal, um, our citizens and taxpayers and business owners have increased expectation for the level of services to be received, uh, despite the fact that many refuse to pay more. So the funding sources is still what it's been a long time ago. Um, uh, and in terms of revenue, um, municipalities only get a fraction of the taxes that come in and not necessarily what is required to uh, uh, fund the work to be done. Um, we also have um, unplanned costs and funding shortfalls. Uh, that's uh, been very uh, relevant in the last couple of years. And I can just call out the floods in Montreal or the floods out in BC, the fires. The impact of climate change and extreme weather has had a, a definite impact on asset management. Um, the government support, uh, Infrastructure Canada, uh, Put out 180 billion spend between 2016 and 2028 in their investment in Canada plan. 
but without proper asset management practices, uh, how do we know we are funding the right infrastructure projects? And that has led, uh, for example, into Ontario uh, as a provincial uh, legislative requirement, Act 588. Uh, uh, corporate asset managers and municipalities uh, now have to uh, demonstrate uh, that they have answered that question. Uh, how do we know we are funding the right infrastructure projects? Um, another key thing we heard is this is not a fact, this is not going away, and this has to be dealt with. Um, and um, another key uh, catalyst what, uh, when talking with uh, several corporate asset managers is um, that uh, they are already doing some level of asset management. They're already delivering services to their customers, and we're already operating and maintaining these infrastructure assets. But how do we bring this all together under one corporate view without changing what we're already doing today and without changing the world of, the, of all the municipality staff and what they're using today? So change management is something that also preoccupies a lot of this uh, space and we see as a catalyst within the space. Uh, asset management can and should bring everything together and that is where uh, Horizon and Arcobus solution comes into play. And more specifically, what we're trying to say is where introducing technology can come into play. Uh, these catalysts and what brings us here today, uh, Horizon in collaboration with Arcobus, we see a role for technology to, uh, to collaborate in the capture, measuring, and reporting and decision support of municipal, municipal infrastructure assets. Uh, we believe with technology, municipalities do not have to change what you are doing at the operational level day to day today. But by introducing technology and best practices to consolidate and aggregate the value data into one corporate asset management solution, you can answer that all important question. Um, how do we know we are funding the right infrastructure project? So I'm just going to take a quick second on uh, Horizon and on um, Arcobus. Uh, Horizon is a Canadian-based uh, company headquartered in Ottawa uh, with servicing uh, clients uh, from coast to coast. Uh, we successfully implemented the solutions uh, across uh, Canada to over 150 clients, some of those clients on the call today. Uh, and uh, we also provide, uh, we provide you with the expert real estate facilities and asset management services and solutions that help you improve operational financial excellence, but also align with your uh, objectives and goals for the municipality. Arcobus is a manufacturer of software for over 30 years of experience, and it's one of the innovators in the space. It has thousands of installs worldwide, and it's currently being used by over 8 million users today. Uh, but I do want to iterate that you do not need to take the word of the panelists or the presenter today. Uh, there are um, independent research and consulting firms out there with a focus on evaluating innovative technologies like Arcobus. Um, and uh, one of those organizations is uh, Verdandix and they published a 2017 report in August, I believe, uh, which places uh, Arcobus in their top three in the magic quadrant. Uh, so in terms of technology partner, I want to reassure Ar that Arcobus is one of the top players in the space. And when you take a closer look at the report, um, in a scenario where municipalities or uh, provincial employees or even Infrastructure Canada itself, federal employees, are in a position where they have to aggregate and consolidate uh, a lot of data specifically around capital planning and condition assessments because we're talking about the um, how to effectively spend uh, my, my capital funds. Um, it's um, Redandex itself, when it the scores uh, among the 14 competitors, there's the compatibility scores. Uh, Arcobus uh, comes out as number one in implementation op options, data center security, enterprise reporting, 
uh, capital project management, which is the whole uh, flow from condition doing the assessment to uh, doing this, uh, evaluating those assessments and determining the capital uh, planning strategy. Business intelligence, so decision support, analyzing all of that data, and master data management, so the robustness of its database. So when we're talking about consolidating and aggregating uh, potentially all the condition assessment uh, data municipalities are already have on roads, on water, and on uh, bridges, culverts, and fa traditional facilities, uh, you definitely don't want uh, the, um, the, pro the technology provider that has the highest rating in managing that data with a strong business intelligence and uh, capital project management. So um, I will remind everyone at this time that you can uh, submit questions on the chat. And at this time, I will be uh, handing over the presentation to um, one of my panelists, where we will be jumping into the product side of the equation. And um, as you can see, I cannot multitask. So I'm just going to make my panelist a presenter. Thank you for everyone's patience. Tiffany, it is all yours. All right, I have control of the screen, but the one who would be speaking right now would be Michael from Archibus. Hi, thanks, Ellie and, uh, and Tiffany. Uh, assuming everybody can hear me okay. Um, so yeah, Ellie's uh, asked me to uh, to step in and talk a little bit about uh, Archibus and uh, and how we're going to frame up uh, what we call the enterprise information uh, model and how Archibus is structured. So. Um, I was going to take a few minutes to talk about that, and uh, and again, if there are any questions in that along the way, please shoot them into the chat, and I'm happy to uh, to address those. But we'll start off by just saying, you know, the Archibus software itself, you know, provides uh, through this enterprise information model provides um, unique intelligence on your real estate, your facilities, and uh, really most importantly for this conversation, your infrastructure assets, those roads, the bridges, the stormwater, the wastewater, et cetera, through your through this this uh, enterprise information model, or EIM as we're, we're calling it. Archibus takes all that information, correlates it all uh, within a structured data model uh, of your enterprise. So the structure organizes all your people, your processes, your places, your assets and costs, and then puts that out there for all your, your uh, and its value for all your stakeholders uh, uh, aligned um, with all your overall business uh, missions uh, to help support all of those uh, additional um, uh, requirements and uh, uh, initiatives. Extending this model, Archibus can provide a common operating picture. It's always important, right? You've got a lot of data sources, a lot of information coming from all different directions, and uh, you want to provide a, a common operating picture that shows, um, you know, both that operational and that strategic stakeholder view, and show them all the results of what their actions are um, and how they impact um, your organization and the mission. Um, Archibus can do this, uh, you know, with that data at any given time uh, through this enterprise information model. Okay. Internally to the structure, this is all very inherent. However, Archibus realizes that uh, there are many, many other systems out there with a lot of valuable data um, that may already be in place. Um, you know, we would love to tell you that Archibus is all things to all people, um, but uh, we also recognize that um, in many cases they, we, we cannot be. So we provide a highly flexible platform for integration. Um, integration is key, key to Archibus and uh, some of the analytical platform pieces of Archibus uh, to be able to provide all of that relevant data in one location, a single operating and uh, uh, operating picture um, so that you can get the, the most value out of the data that's provided and, and utilize it to its fullest potential. Now the image on your screen there is actually a representation of uh, uh, or an attempt at a representation, I should say. It's very busy, I apologize for that. Um, but there's an awful lot of data there. Um, right at the top, it says EIM provides a common operating picture that unites operations with strategy, and that is the goal, that is the absolute goal. 
So across right below that uh, statement uh, lists uh, a few, not all, but uh, many of the applications that are integrated behind the scenes. So as you can see, uh, it's real estate, buildings, workplace, I'm gonna skip over the one in the middle and come back to it, space management, capital projects, environmental and risk. And then right at the heart of it all right there is what we're talking about today around uh, asset management. And the whole idea here is that uh, that unification, uh, the ability to unite all that operational uh, data with your strategy, um, it's paramount to include, I'm gonna start on the right-hand side over there, um, all of your other, your other uh, application areas. So whether you're integrating your finance information, your HR information, your IT information, or just data from other data sources, it really doesn't matter where the data comes from. The EIM platform allows the, the, uh, uh, the data to be integrated and all come together. On the left-hand side, uh, where it says IoT, FIMCAD, GIS, um, that talks more about technologies and be able to integrate and, and pull in and share uh, and leverage all of the data from all of the other technologies. I assume everybody's heard the term IoT these days. It's uh, becoming more and more of a hot topic. Internet of Things, if you haven't heard of it, everything's internet connected now and provides or has the ability to provide data. Um, that's true of all your assets as well uh, out there, whether they're infrastructure assets or building assets, it really doesn't matter. Uh, just about anything can have a sensor on it these days that feeds very, very valuable data uh, that can then support your mission. And this EIM picture is a, uh, is a piece of it. Okay. So through this integrated platform, um, you know, Archibus can then provide a significant amount of insight and actionable intelligence that you know, other parts of your ERP uh, suite may not be able to do all by themselves. Um, but through that integration uh, platform, you know, Arco us can, uh, can provide this. Um, <clears throat> we can because the enterprise information model records not just your costs and your assets, but also other actionable uh, intelligence about all of those assets, the locations of them, the line of businesses they support, uh, and many, many other um, um, data points, just as a, as a simple example. So by knowing all of these relationships and understanding the relationships between all of these different data points, Archibus can provide that intelligence um, on the true value of each spend or each action um, by your stakeholders and by your, your uh, business users, users as a whole and project that value and potential cost out into the future. We're gonna look at a few examples of that here in just a few minutes. Um, next slide, Tiffany, please. So, just as a, an extensible part of this uh, EIM initiative, you know, there are other benefits or other related and uh, advances that are made possible by EIM, this whole concept of EIM. And one of them is, is what we call the 3D Navigator in our Web Central uh, platform. But it really lets you use your, your 3D BIM, if you're using BIM, um, to visualize and connect your buildings and your building systems in a multitude of different ways. Um, that includes all of your infrastructure assets as well. So uh, consider, you know, not only seeing your, your, your Revit model here, your BIM um, uh, data, um, but all of your asset data and all the asset data leading up to that building as well and be able to understand a complete picture of your asset environment. Okay. So we spoke a, a little bit about integrations in the graphic uh, above, the first graphic up there. Um, this view uh, represents uh, a view of our strategic financial analysis application. It's a single view in Archibus um, that has all the potential to bring it all together for you. Um, it adds a total cost model that unifies all capital and all expense costs from all, from all the applications within the Archibus suite. Uh, so all those applications we looked at in the first slide, they're all, all that data, all that cost data, uh, all that ex capital and expense data that's associated with those can roll up into a single view for you. Um, we're going to demonstrate this a little bit more uh, down the line. I'm not going to spend too much, uh, too much on it. Um, but this application adds a ton of functionality. It also includes a pile of analysis metrics um, for the full range of all your real estate facility and, of course, infrastructure data, so all your stormwater and roads, et cetera. Um, it includes uh, information about costs, projects, vacancies, condition indices, um, properties, infrastructure, IT, buildings, and a whole lot more. Um, <clears throat> Um, I guess, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, so it, just to wrap up my little spiel on EIM and that, um, I just want to make quick mention of, uh, of why we're here today and talking about some of the upcoming initiatives for your capital asset management programs and how Archibus kind of relates to that. Uh, you know, 
um, and I think I could say this in confidence, that you know, prior releases of Archibus and the Archibus platform um, have advanced the information model, the enterprise information model, um, significantly uh, over time. With this recent release uh, and, uh, and all the provincial support of uh, Act 588 around your capital asset management plans, Archibus has recognized uh, uh, an increased opportunity now to advance the platform even further. And uh, we've actually committed some significant resources to aligning this uh, enterprise information model and enterprise asset management application uh, within Archibus today, more precisely with some of the requirements of your um, upcoming corporate asset management plans. So why does all this matter? Um, you know, how does this help answer some of the questions um, um, and meet some of your upcoming asset management requirements? Um, next slide, we'll, uh, we'll take a, a little deeper, deeper look at that. Any questions before, uh, any questions on the panel before I uh, move forward? I'll get. Okay. So the biggest thing here on the screen is just sort of a, a, a fast forward view, uh, if you will, uh, showing some of the ability of Archibus to be able to collect all of that uh, budgetary data and uh, project it out into the future. Um, we're actually looking at data from the past, 2011. And then pushing all of that uh, capital and expense uh, information around all your different asset types there on the left, your roads and structures, corporate facilities, water, uh, stormwater, sanitary fleet, et cetera, um, and projecting that, da that data out into the future um, for your planning purposes. Uh, at the top there, you can see, you know, Archibus uh, supports um, just about any type of query that you might like to, uh, like to imagine uh, via various filters. Mechanism. So if you want to whittle this, this data down to a very specific uh, city, building, floor, site, um, asset type, or asset code, um, you have the ability to do that and really, um, really whittle this data down and, and get to the data that you um, that you you need. Uh, this is called the grid view in Archibus. Uh, you can also you can see over there on the right hand side you can uh, base this on not only specific budgets uh, but you can also view similar data as uh, graphics as well. Next slide. And now rolling up into uh, into the uh, strategic financial analysis uh, console. This is a pretty standard view. We're going to focus here on the left hand side around uh, capital, uh, real quick. So again, you know, just as I said before in the uh, in the EIM discussion, uh, what we're talking about here is rolling up all of that capital discussion around all of your your corporate facilities, your stormwater, your fleet, uh, whatever your your asset types might be and looking at and being able to compare all of those data, those costs, that financial analysis um, within, uh, all within Archibus and effectively a single view. All of these things on the left-hand side are all rolling up the data from all the different applications where appropriate. And it's actually, if you can read the uh, items on the left, that's your, uh, uh, your end balances for the last fiscal year. And it's also giving you some predictions for this fiscal year, um, you know, again, based on, on data in the system. Um, it is fully integrated with GIS, um, as well as, as uh, uh, some of the some of the drill downs in that uh, will even take you down to your your um, floor plan views in that if you choose to. Um, but what we've done here is we've selected on the roads um, uh, button on the left hand side, and it's uh, very quickly launched us into a map of our roads, and we're viewing the road condition here up on the. Uh, if you look at the uh, uh, the yeah, that thing up there, legend. <laughs> The legend on the upper right. Um, so it's identifying very quickly our road condition. It looks like the road conditions are actually in pretty good shape, but certainly not my town um, for 2019. Um, and it's also down at the bottom there rolling up some very key metrics for you. So you've got your things like total cost of ownership, et cetera, but we're also looking at, uh, at uh, uptime or, rely, or uptime reliability, I think is, is what the, the term is, and your condition index uh, uh, percentages. So, you know, we can, uh, we can understand and, and start to, to really map out and analyze metrics around, you know, uptime and, you know, how long is, have specific roads or groups of roads been closed over a period of time and, and do some analysis around that. How much is that actually costing um, the city um, or the, the uh, province at any given moment? Okay. All right. That, actually, Tiffany, right, if so you can go, go back to... Uh... Tiffany, can you just go back one slide? I just want to add one thing, if you don't mind. Yeah, so uh, what Michael was uh, presenting here 
is really that aggregation of data. And you need to think of this at a municipal level, but you can also think of this at provincial level or even at Infrastructure Canada level, because uh, I know we have uh, different uh, roles on the call. So you can imagine at a provincial level, or if I take Infrastructure Canada for Ontario, they're going to be receiving 444 approximately different corporate asset management, management plans. How do you consolidate that and ask those basic questions? Well, what is my spend? How much are all these municipalities spending? And be able to articulate and view it. There is that possibility too. Also, quite interesting. What I've heard, I've seen in a couple of discussions, is even for those municipalities which are looking to join with sister municipalities and combine the efforts of their corporate asset management plan, uh, this. Uh, aggregation and this decision support is open to those uh, places where you have multiple uh, asset management plans you need to combine. That is the beauty of the Archibus platform and the enterprise information model, which allows you to combine and aggregate all that data into one source. Uh, so that's really at a very high level answering those questions is, well, how, what is the, the spend and what is the condition of my infrastructure? Uh, but it could go very large. Tiffany, if you can go to the next slide. Uh, the next representation of questions, uh, we classified it for the asset owners, and this is more at the municipal level. And these questions that we're putting out today is not an exhaustive list. It's this list of questions and uh, that I noted down uh, from talking with uh, several people at CNAM and our existing customers again of what asset management, if they were given Nirvana, what a tool would help them in terms of what questions that the tool would answer. So if we look at the asset owners at the municipal level, uh, one of the key things is, all right, I... I've now brought in all this condition assessment data. I understand how much money I need. Key question. Um, but what are my funds and how have they been allocated is another key question. Uh, so with Arcobus, you do have the availability to manage all of those funds. Here's a quick representation of seeing in blue what funds remain available in what uh, in darker orange, you have what's been allocated already for capital funds, and this is for from year 2005 to year 2025, so you can decide on the range. And then you have in light orange your expense funds, which is more your um, your operating costs, those funds that have been allocated to the day-to-day -day operation and not capital planning. Um, and the funds on the left, uh, is a complete list of all your fundings, whether it's grants, whether it's uh, private funding, uh, or from uh, uh, potentially from Infrastructure Canada itself. Um, it's an ability to manage all your funds. If you want to go to your the next slide, Tiffany. And on each one of these funds, uh, on this particular example, we clicked on the expansion program fund one. He drills through and gives you immediately the detail of all those associated projects that benefit from that fund. So in Arcobus, uh, you already have the uh, project management platform, uh, which is the equivalent of your uh, what you decide your capital plan to be. We actually include that into a project, and then you can allocate your funds to that project. But you can see the uh, those projects for roads, wastewater, parks uh, that have been that this fund has been allocated to. So you do have the opportunity for understanding uh, how do I allocate my funds and where are my funds allocated. Next slide, Tiffany. Uh, this is another view, a uh, financial view. Um, and another key question was, um, well, how do I track the reality of my spent and my plan? So. I'm a municipal, uh, uh, I'm in finance, and okay, we've decided to allocate X million dollars for capital planning. Well, how does that compare with the reality? And again, with uh, Arcobus and our project management uh, capabilities, uh, we're able to track uh, the financial outcomes of all the projects, and there's an integration potentially to your 
uh, ERP system to facilitate that, or it could be entry of uh, invoices. But we are able uh, to provide to you the actual view of budget versus spend. So you can have an understanding, and this can uh, drill up alerts as well. So you can have the audibility and the traceability of what is the reality to my spend and my capital project. Yeah, I believe I'm turning it over to you now. All right, thank you, Ellie. This is Tiffany here, and I'm a product specialist with Horizon. Now, when we've been showing that we are consolidating data and asset data, infrastructure, or otherwise, we really mean it. And we also deal with the proposals to the registry of your assets, the lifecycle day-to-day -day management, uh, forecasting, and as well as determining the end of life and the disposal of the assets. So we're there for you for all those stages within your capital asset management strategies to get all that in one place of trust. Our analytic engine will allow you to easily turn on and off the measures you need to evaluate the performance of your infrastructure further giving you any of the red, gr yellow, green benchmarks, as well as trending indicators against the live data always. And as you start increasing the various type of assets into your inventory, we track multiple hierarchies to allow you to support multiple asset types. That allows you to further define that parent-child relationship between all those assets and then when it comes to aggregating them into the reports, you can get from the top tier while not losing any ability to further drill down into the individual key details of the individual asset itself, including access to getting the photos, the links, the surveys and documents. We mentioned we have the ability to have all your Revit or 3D models into the system. So if you've got Revit or AutoCAD, our plugin takes those native drawings and makes them accessible on Archibus. It gives us an even closer look than what the GIS systems offer at the map level, along with the ability to interact, navigate, and perform your ad hoc querying against your models. We're talking a lot about data, and you're tracking everything from your conditions to ages, and that's all because of the need to be compliant. So our Compliant application makes it easy for us to define those milestones and the criteria for success. For these regulations and policies and standards, you will be able to track and put in place and make everything become very clear, as well as making, making sure it's documented in one place. Further, you are able to prioritize all those programs you need to maintain the city or provide any public services. You can further define the amount of, that's going to cost you to develop, uh, develop up and deliver the services and also track how much and who's going to be ultimately paying. Further, you're tr tracking the progress as to meeting those individual expectations and the requirements of the public, which you can further prioritize and update the status of the ones that are realistic to do or rather not. So this application here stores all that documentation all the communications, history, online questionnaires as well, and inspections that are in that repository for you to further analyze your findings. You can further action out any of these items if it's as simple as sim meeting it by doing a ticketing request, then you can push that item out with the wrench. Or otherwise, we can also meet those requirements and expectations through proposing projects. Our project proposal console here allows you to forecast, evaluate, and also score your projects and proposals so that you know the impact early on. We're really scratching the surface here on this section, but the key for philosophy within Archibus is being able to get to all the analytics and reports you need uh, to deal with this decision-making support in order to move these projects forward with just a few clicks. Going into uh, additional details, I can go into reports and pull up one of the highlights we're going to do today, which is heat mapping scorecards. Now, this scorecard here happens to be for a recreational facility, and our heat map further prioritizes what our focus should be on. Anything here in that upper red co orange corner means things that we should take care of a little sooner than others. 
whereas some of these items we can choose to defer it because it's not making as big of an impact onto that health or safety of that asset's performance. You can have your priorities within Archibus. So as you compare the different asset types, the relevant priority levels you use to track will help you make that decision support. To further de determine whether the funding you're receiving can, for example, cover the bare minimum that you need to address the problem areas, if not more. Now further, for the projects that you can proceed with, each effort of work is being tracked in Archibus. And that data changes drastically and dynamically. So Archibus ensures you get the most, as, uh, most relevant look of information time to time, especially when you get a sense of how your projects change from time to time, from having all your red um, items that are assets that are in the red condition and being able to track how many items are expiring or that they're reaching the end of life. And as we increase over time, we can see the changes of our asset profile and the changes that has on our assets in the terms of our geographical look to finally going from the reds to the greens and getting an updated look at what are our, what's now our new look at our costs. Now, of course, the thing we just showed was a nirvana state in terms of the time lapse. Now, there's always going to be some factors that arise when we least expect it, and that changes our plans. So you need a tool that lives and breathes with you. And our what if scenario planner allows us to pick and choose our defined factors against um, your assets, so be it anything from your tax or cost changes, uh, population changes, and then compare that to our investment and what kind of impact it has. Now, of course, everyone says they need a report, so you will need to provide reports. Basically, we're starting to start asking ourselves, we have the data, how do we communicate upwards? We need to paint a picture of our total infrastructure assets at a very high level of all our stormwater, sanitary roads, furniture, properties, equipment, building, the facilities, uh, parks, and so forth, and being able to list all that top level cost. To even sharing that laterally to give the technical levels of service and key measures at the organizational level between all the different asset owners that we have across the organization and across all the cities. And even to the public to basically give them a look at how we've been tracking our ability to meet those levels of service at the customer level based on what they've been funding. So we generate these formatted printable reports as well as being able to define the level of detail that goes into them. Here's just some parts of the exports you can use and you can put do that with a push of a button. When we start our day with Archibus, what's important to track is all the important levels of service and measures to us. So you're able to pick and choose those measures that need to be on your screen when you start your day. That constantly summarizes that entire portfolio at the very top level from looking at our condition across all assets to the overall estimated service life remaining, our uptime and reliability, and assets that have reached an early end of life service. Further, we can go into any one of these items other than trying to look at what's our current performance across and what's our benchmarks right now. We also can see any of the trends that we've been going towards uh, t over time. And further drill into a little further and get into the granular details that you need. So we can go even further than that, past that, and get into the individual records and information sets about our assets itself. Being able to get all the current activities to historical activities, any changes that have been made in the system, 
And we can even go as far as into the individual records themselves and understand what was the actual items that were rolling up and giving us the condition ratings or those metrics that we were seeing when we started our day at the big page. These individual assessment items also give us a chance to address them into the ticketing application within Archibus so that we can resolve those issues that are causing the problems, potentially not necessarily wiping out an asset as a problem area, but potentially maintaining it before we have to get to the point where we are looking at the, its end of life. We can also pull up an analysis profile against all our assets to compare. So all the big numbers such as our overall downtime to the mean time that we're repairing it to how much annual investments we've been putting into the asset in terms of maintenance and bringing and keeping it to um, at those levels of service that we've been giving to the public. Provide. With that, we're uh, reaching the tail end of this piece. I will add to that last slide again I, to reiterate this is for all your different type of infrastructure assets. Um, so I'm looking at the chat for questions. And I'm also looking at the time. We do have a few minutes uh, to answer questions if anybody has. I will allow for a minute or two. In that time, I will announce that uh, we are looking to establish a second webinar in the month of August, where we will be taking a much deeper dive into each one of those different roles uh, we were talking about through the presentation when we were presenting the questions. So the asset owners, the um, corporate asset managers themselves, and the overall uh, aggregated consolidated view. Uh, so uh, I encourage everyone to keep an eye out for the following uh, webinars where we'll be uh, showing much more of um, the product, but also of uh, the specific areas and how uh, technology can assist and help uh, corporate asset managers, especially in the municipal sector with everything that they're experiencing and the objectives they have. Uh, so I'm checking the chat. Hi, Ellie. It's Ayanna here. I do see one yes. about, uh, there's someone asking about the solution as a, as a, is it on the cloud? All right. So, um, this is a package solution specifically for municipalities and specifically around uh, establishing corporate asset management plans. Uh, so we're looking to provide the technology and the pre-packaged level of uh, consulting and services uh, to accompany that technology to get uh, municipalities um, up and running. Uh, and that will be offered uh, on an on-premise model and or a hosted model and or uh, a SaaS model. So we will be, uh, it'll be available in three different uh, packages well, in terms of the technology. Uh, so uh, depending on the client and their, their strategy and the available funding, um, you, we have a choice of uh, packages to choose from. Um, let me double check. Well, I think with that, I will uh, thank everyone for the time and for joining the uh, webinar. Um, and um, we look forward to uh, uh, seeing uh, a lot of you on our subsequent webinars. And I remind everyone that the session has been recorded. And if you are interested in receiving that recording, please do not hesitate to reach out to uh, to Archibus, uh, to Horizons, and I think our contact information is in the invite, but you also have them on screen. And I also want to take a moment to thank all the panelists and wish everyone an absolutely great day. Thank you, everyone.